Let's see how to create this effect using Elementor and some simple CSS without any JavaScript or plugins. I have an Elementor page here and uh, we will use the structure or the navigator widget because it will help us organize the sections. I have the, some sections on my page, for example, these images, and I will be inserting my section with the scrolling images and actually sticky images and scrolling text in between them. I will start by adding a container and inside this container, I will add another container and I will call this one first slide. Now this container will have actually two inner containers. So I will add another container and one more, or I will just duplicate this one. And then I will stack these two uh, horizontally. So I will select my first slide here in the navigator and uh, I will go, I will select row horizontal here. If you cannot find this navigator, you can just right click on the page and go to structure and it will open uh, this basically layers and folders that you're using on the page. So let's go back to our first slide container. So we have on the left side a column and inside this column or this container, we will add the image. Let me just select an image that I want. I will set the resolution to full and on the right side uh, in the right column or right container, I will add my text. So you can add multiple widgets. For example, you can add your heading, you can add uh, some text here. Uh, you can also add, for example, an icon. So I'm just showing you that you can add um, multiple widgets here. So let's use a star, for example, and just give it a black color. I will also select my container and I will set the justify content to center, just to vertically center the content. Now I will select my image widget, so not a container, but the image widget. And in the advanced, I will go to CSS classes and I will call, I will give it a class called uh, first screen. Then I will go to motion effects. And now what we need to do is set the sticky to top. I will remove tablet and mobile and make this sticky only on desktop. Now I want to add the sticky offset, which will basically be the space between the top of my image and the top of the viewport in the browser. So I will set this to something like 200 pixels, for example. And then we have effects offset. Now for now, let's set this to uh, something like 420. And I will explain later what how you can find this number depending on the size of your image and your sections. And uh, that's it basically. That's all that we want to do for now with this first slide. Now in the structure or navigator, I will select the first slide and uh, I will duplicate this. This will be called my second slide. And let's go to our container and our image widget and let's put our second image here. For example, this one. And also in the advanced, first thing that I want to do is I want to set the Z index of this image to be something like, for example, five and the Z index of the first image, I will set to a lower number, for example, two. What this does is that it basically allows you to stack images and that the image that has higher Z index will be basically positioned on top. So it's kind of like arranging elements and stacking them on top of each other. So we, we set the Z index of our second image to something higher, like five. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to go to CSS class of this second image and I will give it a class middle screen. Now, if we have, uh, for example, at least three screens or three images that will be sticky, then all the middle ones will have this middle screen class. So we will have the first screen class for the first one, middle screen for the middle images and the last screen for the last image in the sequence. Then I want to go to motion effects and I will leave these values as they are. Now we want to duplicate this second slide again, and this will be our last and third slide. I will again go to my container, select my image and change the image here that I want to use. For example, this one, go to the advanced. I will give it the class last screen. 
and I will set the set index to something like for example 8. Then I will also go to motion effects and I will leave the sticky offset to 200, effects offset will be set to 0 for this last image and I want to check this toggle stay in column so that it's set to yes. Let's click on publish. And in order to make this effect work, we will need to add some CSS. I'm using simple custom JavaScript and CSS plugin. And uh, in my custom CSS, I will just copy and paste the code that you can find in the link in the description of this video. Let's just activate it and update the code for now. And then we will go back and see what we actually did and what this code means. Uh, let's now preview our page after we've activated the code. And you can see that we have this effect running and working. Now there are two things that you would need to adjust uh, in this effect. So first one, as I mentioned, is that you need to find these offset values that will depend on the size of your image and the height of your sections. So basically what we did is that for the first slide, for example, for the first and middle slides, in the advanced and motion effects, we applied the sticky offset first and you don't need to usually change this. I like to use something like 200 pixels and that sticky offset is basically this distance between the top edge of your image and the viewport. So it is this spacing here. For example, if you set it to something like 100, let's try to make it 100 you will then see that it has much less space between the top of the, the screen or top of the viewport and your image. Let's use 200 for now. And then this effects offset is basically uh, when this image will disappear from the scrolling effect. And uh, that should be actually something uh, like your image height or your section height plus all the paddings and row gaps that are used in your containers. And usually how you can find this value, you would probably have to experiment a bit and to try to find something that fits. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect. For example, in my case, it should be exactly 413 pixels, but I'm using 420 and it is working just fine. But in order to find this value, you can use your image and section height. You can use inspect elements to achieve this. For example, go to inspect elements and then you can just see if you click this button right here select an element in the page to inspect it you can see approximately what is the size or what is the the height of your sections so for example this image is 353 but including uh, all the the paddings and so on of this section right here it is a little bit more so you can see that here it's 373 uh, but then again you have some paddings some row gaps and so on so you need to find this height that will fit for the height of your image and the height of your sections now let's see what this css code actually does and what we wrote in order to understand it uh, let's just delete it here and let's type it line by line uh, basically we can first style our first screen img or image and middle screen img and last screen img and this can be some general styling applied to all of our images in the sliders and uh, we can set for example border radius and set it to something like 20 pixels you can use the important tags you might not need it but in my case i will use them just to override any other settings that i might have and now we will actually start with the actual CSS code for this effect. First, we will type the media query and uh, we will target only the desktop devices because we want this effect to be only on desktop. So we will type min width and we will use uh, 1025 pixels and uh, then we will open our code. Now, first thing is that we will style the first screen. So I will type dot first screen and uh, this will target my first uh, f the, the image of the first screen so by default uh, i want the opacity of this image to be one so i want this image to show as soon as we open the page as soon as we uh, start scrolling and so on so by default the opacity will be set to one 
Now we will be changing this opacity to achieve the effect and we will at some point we will set it to zero and for this we also want to set the transition property so how this transition between one and zero uh, will be actually executed. So in CSS we will type transition first and then we will change the opacity property because that's the property that we are targeting with this transition and uh, we will use something like in my case 0. Um, 0 0.025 seconds because I want to have this kind of hard effect uh, between the transitioning opacity values. If you want it to be more subtle or to, for image to kind of fade into the other image, you can use a higher value, for example 0 0.5 seconds or 0 0.6 or 0 0.2 seconds. In my case I'm using a sudden transition, not subtle, so I will use a hard, um, hard effect using a very low transition value. And then I will use ease out. And in my case, again, I will use the important tag. Then I will just copy this code and I will use the same line just instead of transition. I will type dash moss transition. And I will also use um, webkit transition property with the same values. This will just target different browsers and to make sure that we are compatible with all of them. Now the next thing is that I want to uh, apply some styling to the middle screen and last screen. So this will target uh, my the images in the middle and last screen. And by default, uh, these images should be uh, should should not be displayed. So the, by default, their opacity will be set to zero. We want them to show only once we reach the threshold and only once uh, we actually scroll to them. By default, we are setting the opacity to zero and then we are using the same transition uh, like here. So let's just copy and paste it. And uh, now we will be actually editing some sticky effects. So I will type Elementor sticky and uh, then I will type double dash and active. And this will actually target the active state uh, of these elements once they actually become sticky. And we will be targeting middle screen. And then we will do the same Elementor sticky active for the last screen. So we want these two screens or these two images in these screens to appear once they become sticky. So by default, we set their opacity to zero. And once they become sticky and once we scroll to them, we want their opacity to be set to one. And that's exactly the Elementor Sticky Active class. And the last thing that we want to add here is uh, that we actually want the first screen and the second and the third and so on. So the first and the middle screens, we want them to disappear once the next screen shows up. And once we've reached uh, that um, effects offset that we defined in Elementor. If you remember, we were defined this effects offset and we set it to 420. And that is basically when our image will disappear. So once we reach that sticky um, effects offset, we want this image to disappear, which means that we will type Elementor sticky double dash effects. So that's the class that we are targeting, Elementor sticky effects. And then we are targeting the first screen and Elementor sticky double dash effects middle screen. And uh, this is basically where we are defining their, the, the disappear, which means that we will set the opacity to zero. So that's it. Basically, that's the code that we used. And that's uh, basically the explanation of each line and what this does to our sticky effect. Uh, you can add as many intersections or as many middle screens as you need. And if you apply the same middle screen class to them, this effect will be working. Let's now try to add uh, another slide here. So after the second slide, I will just duplicate it. And uh, let's go to that image right there. And maybe just change it to something else. And now let's publish our page and see if this still works when we added another middle screen. You can see that we are scrolling and this works just as fine. So as many middle sections that you have, this will be working as long as you are assigning the correct classes to each of them. So we have three classes, first screen, middle screen and last screen.
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe.